keeping up with our motto that learning be a joy and teaching a pleasure. Here we are with the remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning students. Hello children and welcome to one more session of standard 4 EVS 2 lesson number 9 Pratapgarh makes history. Children, in the previous chapter we have learnt how Shivaji fought with Chandra Ram Mori and he brought the Jagir of Javli and the fort of Rairi under his control. Near the fort of Rairi on the Bhurpe hill Shivaji built one more fort named Pratapgarh. Adilsha perturbed. The court of Adilsha Bijapur was passing anxious days due to the growing exploits of Shivaji. The Sultan summoned all his sardas to court to take the stock of the situation. Badi Saiba, the Dwagar queen, who personally ruled after the Adilshai administration from Bijapur, was also present. The one question before the assembly was how to bring Shivaji to book and break his revolt. Badi Saiba asked a straight question to Asadas. Tell me who is willing to march against Shivaji and put an end to his rebellion. The court became silent. Everybody sat quietly in his place. Nobody had the answer. Just then, a giant man came forward and bowed respectfully before the throne. Who was this? His name was Afzal Khan. The Khan accepts the challenge. The Khan accepted the challenge and he picked up the beetle leaf from the slaver as a mark of acceptance. Shivaji? Who is this Shivaji? I shall arrest him and bring him to the court of Bijapur, dead or alive. Afzal Khan was one of the mighty sardars at the court of Bijapur. His physical prowess and strength were unbelievable. He could bend a crowbar with his bare hands. He was a past master in achieving his end by any available means. This Afzal Khan had accepted the challenge of bringing Shivaji to the court dead or alive. The court was highly pleased. Everybody thought that it was the end of Shivaji and that he would be brought to Bijapur either alive or dead. Afzal Khan left Bijapur in a great pomp. He was accompanied by a huge army fully equipped for battle. He was previously the Subhedar of Waid for 12 years and knew the country well. He marched on Maharashtra full of pride and confident of success. Swaraj in danger At this time Shivaji was at Rajgad. He got the news of Afzal Khan's movement. He immediately saw that his Swaraj was in great danger. But he did not lose courage. He knew that the Khan was full of strategy and had a huge army with him. Shivaji's kingdom was very small in comparison and so was his army. He could say that he could never hold his own in open battle against the Khan. His only hope was in some strategic move that would take the Khan by surprise. In consultation with Jijabai and with her blessings, Shivaji Maharaj shifted his headquarters from Rajgad to Pratapgarh. Abzul Khan's counter move When the Khan learned that Shivaji had moved from Pratapgarh, he became very angry because he was aware of the difficulties in conquering Pratapgarh. Pratapgarh was situated on high hills and surrounded by thick forests and high hills. There was no proper access to the fort and it was very difficult to move the artillery. Besides, the jungle was full of wild animals. The Khan initiated many moves in hope of bringing Shivaji down to the plains. He attacked the holy cities of Pandarpur and Tuljapur. I hoped that Shivaji would come down to the plains and fight with him. But Shivaji was too clever. He refused to leave Pratapgarh. Khan changed the tactics. In a spirit of apparent friendliness, he wrote a message to Shivaji. Shivaji, you are like my son. Come to me. Return our forts. I shall see that Adilshah makes you a sardar at his court. It for tat. Shivaji quickly saw through the Khan's offer he was taking no chances. 
In reply to the Khan's message, he said that, I am guilty of having captured your foes. I must have your promise of pardon. Please come and meet me at the foothills of Pratapgarh. I am really afraid of coming down and meeting you. Passing his fingers through his beard, Abzal Khan smiled and said, This is good news. What can Shivaji do against the mighty Abzal Khan? He has no guts to fight me. I shall myself go to Pratapgarh and put an end to his life when we meet. So he agreed to Shivaji's proposal. The Meeting Place The marching on the Pratapgarh foothills was chosen at the meeting place. The date and time was fixed and that each one would be accompanied by a servant followed by ten bodyguards at a distance. Shivaji divided his army into small units. He took every measure for safety and left nothing to chance. Many advisers tried to persuade him not to go and meet the Khan, but the Khan could not be trusted. Now before the meeting, On the day of the meeting, Shivaji visited the Bhavani's temple on the Pratapgarh foot and took darshan. Soon after that, he started preparing himself for the meeting. He wore his surwar and coat of mail. Over the coat of mail, he wore a kurta and a flowing robe. On his head, he wore the jire top that is helmet and tied a mandil around it. He fitted Wagnak onto the fingers of his left hand. Hidden inside the left sleeve was a bichwa and he carried the danpatta in his hand. He was now ready to face the Khan. All the sardas were waiting outside. Shivaji turned to them and said that each one must carry out the duties that were assigned to them. If things go wrong and if he is killed, they should not lose heart. They would install Shambhaji on the Gadi and follow the commands of Ma Sahib, that is Jijabai, and to make the subjects happy and that he was going to meet the Khan. He was accompanied by his Vakil Pantaji Gopinath, 10 bodyguards, including Jivaji Mahala, Shambhaji Kauji, Yasaji Kank, Krishnaji Gaikwad, and Siddhi Ibrahim. When Shivaji read the Shamyana, he saw that the Khan had already arrived. He was playing with his, be- with his beard, planning the future moves. His soldier, Bada Sayyid, was standing beside him. He was highly skilled in the use of Danpatta. Shivaji came to the entrance of the Shamyana, but seeing by Sanda, he stopped and would not proceed further. The Struggle with the Khan Shivaji Maharaj cautiously took a step forward and the Khan took him in his embrace. Compared to the Khan, Shivaji was short. He reached only as far as the Khan's chest. At the same moment, Afzal Khan held Shivaji's neck in his iron grip and tried to stab him on the side with his dagger. But Shivaji's robe tore and he was saved because of the coat of mail. Shivaji, knowing that the Khan was trying to kill him, quickly thrust the Wagner in the Khan's stomach. He drew out his bichwa in his, from his right hand and drove into the Khan's stomach and tore apart his guts. The Khan fell down. Khan's Vakil Krishnaji Bhaskar came forward and attacked Shivaji with his sword, but Shivaji killed him. When Bada Sayed heard the shouts and noise, he rushed into the Shamyana. As he was about to strike Shivaji, Jivaji Mahala came between them and killed Bada Sayed with one stroke. Because of Jiva, Shiva was saved, became a common saying afterwards. Shambhaji Kauji displayed great bravery in this conflict. The Rout of Abzal Khan's Army Thus, with triumph, Shivaji went up to the fort. The gun boomed and gave the signal. On the instant, Shivaji's troops came out of their hidings and attacked the Khan's army. The Khan's army was completely unprepared for the attack and was caught in a difficult terrain. They could not even run away to save their lives. The Maratha troop chased them in hot pursuit and destroyed the whole of the Khan's powerful army. Fazal Khan, Abzal Khan's sons, escaped with great difficulty and reached Bijapur. His account of the disastrous campaign spread gloom over the whole of Bijapur. Shivaji thus humbled the most powerful sardar of the Bijapur court. His fame spread everywhere. 
the songs of his exploits were heard in the hills and valleys of Sayadri. That's all children in this session today. We'll meet in the next session. Until then, keep watching and keep learning.